it in right, I'll paste that also in the description box. If you typed it in right, you refresh the page, you should be logged in. Israeli cop, that's what I am, I guess. So I'm going to click that Israeli cop and I'm going to go to my profile. And if you notice in the URL, you're going to be looking there a lot. We have user ID. And I guess that's everybody's user ID. So if we go back to our main page and posted by our admin, RS Smith, he's negative one. So we can edit our account, but we can't edit his. But this is just a matter of testing to see how the website was coded and if it was tested for vulnerabilities and manipulation. So I'm going to go ahead and take out the ID parameter. So it's just page equals user info. And we get a list of all the users, including the admin. I'm going to copy our URL. I'm going to log out now. So there's no cookie. I'm going to go paste. So we're going back to that user info page. And somebody is, I guess, logged in. And their session is available to me right now. And this is, he's a level one. He's a moderator, that means. So I'm going to edit his account. And I'm going to change his password. I'm going to copy his, uh, his username. And I'm going to log in. And now we're logged in under a moderator's account. So we can go to our mod. Access denied. This is where a fire cookie comes in. We need to go to our fire cookie tab and we need to go to our RW session and delete your old session so both of those aren't in there because it recognizes your uh, level zero session and it kicks you out the mod panel so now we go to our mod panel and we have SQL light access SQL light is basically um, queries you can enter SQL queries but it's a, a sh well I'm not really going to show you guys. It's just um, a basic structure and with different sort of access. So if you look it up, you're going to be able to figure out uh, for the SQL light system what you're going to need to type in if you wanted a proof of concept and figure out how to do it. So what we're going to type in is um, select name because what we're going to be doing is trying to find uh, the administrator's password. So we're going to do select name from SQLite underscore master where type equals table order by name. We're going to do that SQL query. And we get all of our tables right here. So what we're going to do next is um, uh, actually we're going to open up Firebug and go to our HTML tab. So we know that our SQL queries work. So that's all great. And if you notice, if we search, if we look at the source and find SQL underscore DB, um, we ha can change the value. It, so right now we're doing queries based off of our rwr.dbase. And if we went back to our um, ls unix command, uh, further back in our branch to our other database. I'm going to copy this and throw it up in another tab. Actually, why don't I just go back? It was bs.dbase. So we're going to take bs.dbase. We can exit out of this now. And we're going to edit this value uh, with um, bs.dbase. But this would be reading bs.dbase out of whatever directory this was in. So we need to go back to the parent directory, and we're three branches in. So we would go dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot. So we have dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash bs.dbase. We're going to click the page so it's highlighted and now we're going to do the same query right here with the SQLite master hoping that the admin system uses SQLite 
and sure enough it does and we have web hosting so we're gonna go into the web hosting table and take a look what's inside and there's more than likely going to be passwords so we're gonna type in the query select asterisk from web underscore hosting that's the table name and now we have web emails web users web packages and web passwords and we're logging into um, uh, wonder diet so we're gonna take his username and we're gonna go back here to our admin directory wonder diet and the password sucker every minute we're gonna take his password and log in and it shows the directory what directory you're in right here but unfortunately you can't click on anything or change it um, we can select our files and download them upload files make new files edit files so if we go ahead and download something um, it takes us to this picture but you need to look up here we have a new profile and these are easily exploitable we can parse any page we want and it has the var www public directories so all we basically need to do is just change what client we're looking at and we are looking at um let's go back to our missions because I that's what I pasted up here earlier um what's happening uh, realistic challenges take this challenge it was space 46 space 46 and then we also have his archive file name so if we add that after space 46 directory and it would download that uh, archive and we would just send it to our buddy congratulations you have successfully completed mission 11 so that's that i hope you guys learned a couple of new things and if you are just go um copying and pasting what's in the description box at least study the code and try to learn it what's going on um so yeah i'll be hitting you guys up with mission 12 soon i leave for vacation in a couple of days so i don't know if i'm going to do it before or after but i'll get it out there thanks for watching